What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. For those of you that are watching it after the live stream, before the video gets underway, if you guys need any type of blood work to check your hormone panels pertaining to anything, whether that's testosterone, uh, kidney, cholesterol, cortisol, thyroid, liver, anything, men or women, I use Let's Get Checked. It will be in the description down below. Discount Kenny KO will save you, I believe, 30% off the top of my head. And of course, also, maybe you guys are being a little bit promiscuous and you're potentially messing around and dabbling with some girls on OnlyFans. Uh, there is some STD tests available as well. So all encompassing everything I use uh, in the description down below. But without further ado, today's video is going to be about... Kelly Muscle released this video actually today titled Steroids the Raw Truth. And I would guess this is going to be Kelly Muscle admitting to steroid usage, per uh, maybe his cycles. I, I have yet to watch it, so we're going to watch it together. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey, YouTube, it's your boy here, Kelly Muscle. And I just want to say hello to everyone. I hope you're having a good day, good week, good month, good year, good life. All right. Uh, today I'm doing a video that uh, is overdue. You know, a lot of people don't, <laughs> don't uh, do what I'm about to do, and you know, I He's know probably the re. All right, so Cali Muscle's probably one of for those of you guys that are watching who don't know who he is. He's one of the oldest bodybuilders that was claiming Natty for the longest possible time, um, and then maybe Michael Hearn after him is also another one that's on the list reason because i was like that as well what i'm gonna do is today tell you guys my experience with peds performance enhancing drugs juice roids whatever you want to call it right testosterone basically it's all testosterone um so i'm gonna take you from the beginning uh my initial time uh, experiencing it and it was back in 2000 I want to say six or seven, when a friend of mine that I knew for a lot of years, he was a competitive bodybuilder, um, he told me that <clears throat> I would come in and kill the bodybuilding game if I got on some roids, right? And at this time, I'm in my early 30s. Um, and so... I Dude, what blows my mind is, all right, I give Cali Muscle respect for actually finally opening up and talking about it who knows if maybe it's because of his recent like heart attack and health scare that he was having but people also need to realize he lied to his entire fan base everyone out there that he is natural for such a long time so i'm curious to see what his response would be for why he lied for so long i'm gonna assume maybe it was because of sponsors or maybe he was afraid of losing potential I listened revenue. to him i seen he was winning local shows uh, like the Contra Costa and Hayward, the San Jose bodybuilding show. He was in the bodybuilding game. He was doing it all. He knew uh, about the drugs and supplements and all that. So I took his advice. And so uh, he gave me my first dose of uh, Sustanon. And because uh, I was scared of needles or whatever. So he did it uh, the first so Sustanon, for those of you that aren't aware that are watching, is a blend of esters. So it's usually like a testosterone cypionate, a testosterone propionate. So you have fast acting and then long acting like as or esters, sorry. Four times, like once a week he had did it. And at that time it was Sustanon 250. And so immediately within three weeks, per ml. I gained like five pounds. My strength was crazy, right? And so I'm like, oh, God, we're on to something. You know what I mean? But like I say, coming from a ghetto thug mentality, um, I was still scared of the effects of my health and things like that. But the, what it did was just over it. Over, what it did overrode my fear of it. And so uh, at this point, I decided to do it. Isn't that crazy? to think about i mean i was there too right like you start to see the progress and the results and it gets to a point where you more so care about the way you look and how how good you feel and look on it that you don't really care about the negative health consequences or the potential side effects do a bodybuilding show uh when he started because he talked me in. you should do a show you should do a show six months in i decided to do the show contra costa uh 2009 contra costa bodybuilding show so I did that show, 
and won. But after the sus nine, I went sus, deca, D ball, and I stacked that. And so when I was getting ready for that first show, I just got on like Tess and Nanthe and Winstro. And I would take an anti estrogen uh, Remedex. So that's what okay. I did my first show on, and I won it. Contra Pretty Costa, basic. you guys I can imagine. Do the I mean, Cali Muscle doing um, any type of cycle, to be honest, just because I know his genetics and the way he still looks, he would probably respond better to like a low dose testosterone than some people would with like these crazy high astronomical cycles. Research. So I believe uh, I'm so far. So at this point, I'm like, oh man, we got something here. So test you know AI what I mean? and uh, one stroke. Two more shows, maybe three more shows. I did a Contra Costa. I did the San Jose. I won super heavy in San Jose. L.A. show. And I did the uh, Cal show. Only show out of those. I mean, I won them all, but I wanted to win the California show. Because saying you Mr. California was everything to a California bodybuilder. So that show I didn't win. I came in third, actually. And so that year I won three, came in third. Okay, so here's what happens, right? I'm gonna predict. So because Cali Muscle was winning shows and then got third in this show that he's talking about, I'm gonna be a little bit of a fortune teller. I, I guarantee what he probably did then, like every other bodybuilder and person that's out there competing, is he his next cycle was more extreme to make up for the lack of placement. That was in 2009. Let's see. And so I'm like, hey, I got some here. Even though I was mad I lost the uh, Mr. California show. Uh, at that point, I knew it was politics. I, I, politics and everything. So I knew I just had to overcome the political aspect. So was he taking I out? I guess it would be TRT. In, doing those four shows, That's I went guess. on Tess. I went on Anavar, Winstro, uh uh, always took a Remedex, took Lasix, uh, all the stuff that harms you. You know what I mean? Uh, so 2010 come, and I moved to L.A. So I'm like, I want to become a pro body. So the nice part about Cali Muscle, at least opening up now, is it leaves hope. Like, yo, maybe, <laughs> boys, maybe this will be the wake-up call for Michael Hearn to finally open up. That's the cycle I truly want to know more than anyone, more than Jeff Side, more than David Laid, more than Matt Does Fitness, more than any creator that is out there. I want to know Mike O'Hearn. So if Mike could do it, I don't think it's ever going to happen in our lifetime. I believe he's taking that one to the grave, but we'll see. So during this time, uh, let me rewind back a little bit. During the time of me doing these bodybuilding shows, I studied a minimum of eight hours a day. I bought all the ana anabolics books. Uh, I was on Google eight hours a day because everybody do the same workouts. Everybody takes the same supplements. It's how you stack the pads. You know what I mean? That's go cause the look you want or the look that you trying to achieve. So with me, I knew I wanted to stay full but look shredded. So I had to try Clembruterol. I had to try T3. Um, by the way, I'm not a big advocate. I hate clenbuterol and I hate T3, quite more than T3. But if you're watching this now, never take clenbuterol, please slide in my DMS. I will tell you much better, safer alternatives. Clenbuterol can literally fuck you up, um, from one time, like one little cycle taking it for a lifetime. So I know better options, better alternatives. DM me if that is the case. And so I was experimenting based. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't have no advisor. Uh, the guys I knew was amateurs that was guessing as well. And so uh, I remember this one time I experienced a bad infection. Uh, my partner or guy I knew gave me some testosterone. And all of a sudden a boil had came on the side of my hip. And so I immediately knew it was from uh, bad juice. I knew it was from bad Yo, stuff. Man. Those of you and guys I mean, that, that had a thing bad got injection, big right here on my side, it's the worst, I still got the scar right? to prove it. Let me see if I can see it. So this scar right here was a big old boil. 
And so uh, it took about a week, and I got in a bath, hot bath. I mean, it was excruciating pain, man. I got a video on YouTube where I had it bandaged. Uh, excruciating pain. And uh, after the seventh day, I got in a hot tub, and it exploded all this. Na I mean, stuff I didn't even think the human body could produce. And so right then, I got more scared. But of course, because... Do you notice how, even though he continues to get more scared, with like the potential things happening, infection, side effects, he continues to do it and push it more extreme. That's the bodybuilder mindset. Because of the muscle, the strength, the look, I proceeded on. Um, See? And so 2010, I moved to Los Angeles, uh, wanting to become a pro bodybuilder. And so I kept studying, kept getting these books online, researching everything and you know, I had got to the point where I looked good. I, I was big, 260. I got One time I got up to 270. Let me tell you about how I got up to 270. I was 250 and decided to get on insulin. Worst thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> I, can, I can agree with Callie on this. Guys, please never take insulin. Uh, unless your goal... I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you what to do with your life. Unless your goal is to compete for the rest of your life and you're trying to win pro shows and you're trying to be a crazy top tier bodybuilder, then potentially, and even then have like a smart coach and have someone smart doing the protocol and everything for you. But for the average gym bro, there's no point to take insulin. You're just going to mess yourself up. It's one of the most deadly compounds in bodybuilding. Probably besides go to prison. <laughs> but, uh, so the hype was insulin, became insulin. And so I'm like, let me try it, right? Bro, I almost died. Like See? what insulin do is uh, get you to the point where you got to eat a lot of carbohydrates and it fills your muscle in with carbohydrates. Because what happens with insulin, for the, those of you guys that don't know, is if you take too much insulin, you're going to need to refuel your body with enough carbs to where you don't go hypoglycemic, which is low blood sugar. And it can be fatal. So for instance, if you take too much insulin, you don't consume enough carbs in the right time frame. Let's say you miss dose or you do something wrong. You can fall over dead, which has happened to numerous bodybuilders. So what happened to me was I never forget this day because uh, I was helping moving some stuff out of dead person house. And what happened was I ate a lot of carbs and I went to go help move this stuff out of this person's apartment to help uh, my then family. And then uh, all of a sudden I got dizzy. I started sweating. I'm like, oh man, I'm about to go into a coma. Low uh, blood sugar. They call it a diabetic coma. And so I'm huffing, puffing, drenched with sweat. You start to like feel drunk. For, that, for any of you that have experienced low blood sugar, Maybe you're diabetic or maybe you've used insulin in the past. Um, you essentially just feel like drunk. You're like nauseous. You feel sick. You start to sweat. You're weak. Um, and then it continues to decline if you don't fix and resolve the issue. And then eventually, yeah, it leads to like a coma and fatality. I had to tell uh, my friend that was with me at the time, go get me a snicker bar. And... Uh... You know, I got the snicker bar and it, uh, after about 10, 15 minutes, I got back to normal. Right then I left that stuff alone. Um, Smart. so that was, man, do not take insulin. If you're a bodybuilder, you don't risk in your life. That's don't take insulin. probably the cause of quite a okay, few boys. bodybuilders dying because if you don't get that sugar spike, you think, oh, I'm going to just go to sleep and you go to sleep and die. So leave that stuff alone, man. So 2010 come, uh, I do about four more shows. Um, I went from 250 to, uh, I think I was competing at about 228, somewhere around there. I was a heavyweight, sometimes super heavyweight. And this one trend gets in, comes in the picture. Uh, I start taking, my max on testosterone was, I was up to a thousand. Damn. Was, so that was like one Shit. cc a week of testosterone, which is 250. Uh, I was on like 600 trend. 
Uh, at times, I would take deep balls. Sometimes, uh, Anadrol oh would God. mix it in. And, you know, people on the internet, they so like, for how instance, did guys, I have that um, bass? I've never... There's a big misconception. A lot of people think I'm still on cycle. I haven't touched anything for a very, very long time. I've been on TRT for like two years. That's it. Um, but and I think that's probably what Cali's on now. And that's probably why he's opening up about all the stuff he took. But uh, back when I did compete, I had never gone above 500 milligrams test. Cali was at 1,000. And that sounds like he was at 600 trend. Um, I've never gone above 300 or maybe it's 400. Somewhere in that range. 300 to 400 trend. Um, and that was super short term. And now on top of that, he's stacking other Which things. I still got it now, and I'm not on none of that. So maybe that explains why he was so big. But um, if he's being honest, I assume he is. I don't know why, why you would lie. Keep my though. estrogen low, and I kept my estrogen low by staying on the Remedex. And uh, Remedex is a estrogen. You know, it keeps the estrogen low. So I would stay on a Remedex year round. And that's how I kept my lean, vascular, hard look. So first, uh, um, I'll answer this question, Ides. Uh, what do you think of the new mass blast by Dr. Tony Huge? So they actually wanted me to take place in it and uh, do some of their like Zoom calls and stuff they've been doing pertaining to it. I'm not a big fan because the thing is when I did the mass blast, and, and respect to Tony, they're all incredibly smart and I hope the best for them. When I did the documentary and did my transformation, the thing is you get depleted beforehand because you're fasting. So your muscles just look super flat and stringy and you're depleted. So your muscles aren't retaining any water. Cause for those of you who don't know, I believe the muscle is like 70% water. So I was just super flat. And then we go into the mass blast, which is just a ton of compounds, ton of growth hormone, testosterone, D ball combination of SARMs, like all this crazy stuff. And you just feel so incredibly unhealthy. Uh, for the time frame you're doing it. For me, it was a week, I believe, off the top of my head. And I had pedal edema. Obviously, I was retaining a ton of water. So when we did the DEXA scan before, remember, I was depleted. And then when we did the DEXA scan after, I was basically refueled back up. So it's hard to say how much was actually gained because I went from a depleted state to a refilled state, if that makes sense. So the mass blast, I'm not a fan of because you're putting your health in jeopardy for a short-term goal Why? In my opinion, I don't think you can really build too much. Like the body can only do so much in a short time frame that you'd be more beneficial doing like a much lower dosage at a safer amount and doing a longer cycle than trying to make like some crazy progress in a week. For those, you know, inquiring, want to know, or how do you know, that's how guys stay uh, vascular looking. You keep your water estrogen low and that keeps the water off of your muscles so my that was my off-season stack uh test trend 600 uh sometimes anadrol sometimes d ball remedex that was my stack so getting ready for shows i would do uh uh test probe trend ace Winnie, wow. Win was just Winstrel, Bar, Clembuterol, T3. Once again, hate those compounds. And uh, some t well, Lasix in there, water pill when you get ready for the show. Also another and dangerous compound. that was compound. my stack, man. I never did Synthol. I never did anything to pump up my, my muscles for a day or anything like that. Uh, after a show, I would get off everything. I would do uh, oh, so nothing. Cold turkey. I would come off everything, do Clomid. Okay, so and, the PCT. Uh, HCG. When I would come Good off PCT everything. That's protocol. why you, if you guys research my videos, I was bulked up sometime, then I trimmed down because to me, I knew it was going to end up being a health problem. That's why I would see myself in the mirror like, oh, I'm too big, and I would trim down. And so you guys could go to videos. They're like, oh, he off his cycle. He off this. And yeah, I was. I was trying not to have a heart but, attack, which I had. But he, it, <laughs> the funny part is, he's playing it off like we knew that the whole time. But the whole time during he was taking these cycles, he was claiming natural. Anyway, so what happened to me was uh, I had to take a hiatus. I wanted to have a kid. I wanted to have kids. 
or a kid um, when I moved to Vegas in 2016. I got with my now Is baby Kyle mama wife. And uh, we decided we wanted to have kids. So I went to a fertility specialist, and they said my sperm was zero. And here it is, a guy like myself. I suppose should have if, you know, I wasn't a a thug ghetto guy, (laughs) which a lot of them do anyway. But uh, I was supposed to have like 10 kids. Uh, That's how many babies I supposed to have. Who the uh, fuck? You know, the... Who wants 10 kids? Real talk. Even one kid is a ton of work. Two kids, three, 10, 10. If you actually want 10 kids, I want to know in the chat right now. There's no way anyone actually legitimate. I mean, I'm sure there probably is someone, but like there's no way vast majority of people would ever want 10 kids. The women that I was with at the time getting pregnant when I was young, I told them I was in the streets, might get killed. Might go do life for death row, so don't have kids by me. And none of them did, uh, gratefully. At the, it's great they didn't for that time period, because I was just a hothead in the streets. So when I decided to have kids, went to a fertility specialist in Vegas, they said, oh, guess what? Your sperm count at zero. And man, I was crushed. That, that... <laughs> that like hurt me more than anything in my life besides that was in test trembling man uh Winstraw, i felt less of a man anavar you know what I mean? so i uh, talked to the doctor and i asked her what can i do to bring my sperm count back up so she said firstly you're gonna have to get off steroids yep. then we got to put you on a high doses of clomid and a high dosage of uh hcg Yep. And I was You're doing H- fertility. MG, I think it is, uh, as well to boost up my sperm. So that's why uh, that video, why I lost my size. I was off everything for two years. So it took me. For those of you guys that are curious, there is protocols and um, things you can follow to get your fertility back. If you've been using for a long time, um, usually HCG is really good at doing the trick. Um, but there is just a lot of protocols you can follow and usually you can bounce. It back took a year is really bad about a year from my. No, it took about six months for my sperm count to get up to 10 million. So at that point they, uh, extract, extracted, uh, sperm from me and meshed it with my girl AIDS. We did IVF. That's how I have my beautiful twins. Now, uh, we did IVF and luckily God, thank you for letting my sperm come back or else I wouldn't have had the, my babies. You know what I mean? And so, uh, you know, I- um, egregious blunder. If you need HCG, check out the link in my description down below. Um, I have sourcing for pretty much everything. I was just blessed to be able to do that and have a woman to do it with that had strong eggs as well. And one to endure doing IVF. So, you know, that's basically my experience with roids. Uh, of course, you know, the question is, did it uh, cause my heart attack? You know, doctors never know the cause. It could have been being in prison 11 years, eating top ramen, eating bad food as a kid. And when I got, pr- I just ate bad. Yo, this is actually no lie. This is my favorite version of Cali Muscle thus far that I've ever watched. And I've been watching Cali Muscle for quite some time is it seems like he's actually being pretty open about his cycles. I don't think he's lying because he's being pretty transparent. Um, And then right here talking about his heart attack, whether it was food related, he knows he had a bad diet and still does. Actually, I don't know if he still does, but he acknowledges his eating habits, um, his cycles. So the the transparent version is much better. So that could be the cause or it could be the cause of the steroids you know, trying and experiment with all that stuff. So it's a, it could be a combination of both, right? We don't know. So luckily I just uh, experienced one clogged artery. So they put a stent in it. Um, so now everything's running perfectly. Uh, I used to have bad swelling in my feet, ankles. I don't know more but since, you know, the stent was put in. Evidently the heart is back working how it's supposed to. Um, 
you know, so it's my advice. Right, it don't is. even get on it, bro. Unless you go, you're 35, you go to the doctor, they say your testosterone low. No man wants his testosterone low. Why? Because your libido will be low, your energy low, your body more prone to hold fat, which cause health problems. Um, and you know, when you try Roy's, man, it's addictive. Like any other drug, your libido through the roof, which is sex drive, but people don't know, don't know what I'm saying. Your sex drive is through the roof, your energy through the roof, you eating, you become muscular, strong, fast, seems like you- Yo, So that's another big misconception when people think about uh, low testosterone is what Callie's covering right now is most guys, when they get into the gym, they think that testosterone is only responsible for muscle gain and you know the look of the muscle. But honestly, testosterone is responsible for your daily motivation, your sleep cycles, um, your libido, your skin, your hair, uh, literally everything day to day life is influenced by your testosterone levels. So if you're like low, if you're crashed, let's say you ran a cycle, you didn't PCT and you're suppressed, you're going to feel awful. And the reason you feel awful is because your testosterone levels are low. Thinking on point, your mind is just clicking right. Uh, you know, it's the hormone we have in us as men that makes us men. When you can think back when you was 12, 13, 14, 15, you had the boners all the time. Your energy was crazy. You was all over the place. That's what testosterone do for you. You know what I mean? And I don't recommend it to anybody under 35, man. It's just... It could ruin your life. As you guys see a lot of people doing Yo, Saul Infinity, uh, does anyone know how much it costs to get your text test levels checked? If you check the link in the description of this video, let's get checked. I mentioned at the start of this video, if you use discount Kenny KO, it'll save you 30%. And that's the cheapest way, it's discreet, ship straight to your door. Um, you can check your testosterone levels, your estrogen, your liver enzymes, thyroid, like full encompassing everything. Doing videos about it. Uh, you see these bodybuilders, I feel sorry for the guys, pros, top pros, you know, uh, can't have kids. They say they don't want them, but I know because I was like that, you can't have them. They can't have them. That's why, because they didn't shot the, you know, the sperm out. So you don't want to do that, man. Uh, <laughs> wait till you, in your late 30s, early 40s, go to a doctor and let them prescribe it. Because another thing. It's made in somebody, most of it's made in somebody's kitchen or bathroom. You don't even know where yeah. it's coming from. That's why I got that bad infection. That Yo, this is what I legit always tell people when they ask me like where to buy and they're trying to find all these underground labs is I tell them, look, based on what I used to experience, you're either going to get stuff that's severely underdosed or something totally different. Or you're just going to get a gnarly infection. And the reason for that is what Callie's talking about is you're going to get literally these underground dudes just mixing stuff in their bathtub that they will probably also bathe in. But as soon as they drain it, they're mixing compounds in it and then they're selling it to you. And that's why you're getting these gnarly infections in your legs where you might need to get the muscle fillet open to get the infection drained out, possible amputation, uh, get stuff through your doctor, get prescribed. It's so easy. I don't know why people don't do it. Literally, everything you possibly need is in the description. Like, <laughs> literally. Bacterial infection. Uh, you don't know where it's been made, man. It's like any other drug. People use it now and get fentanyl and they get... People say it's testosterone, but it'd be Winstraw or Deca. You don't know where it's made. And I would just leave it alone, man. Get fit. Yeah. The, the, the key way with getting fit, buff, healthy, eating right, drinking a uh good amount of water and um high reps bro that's it uh like i said testosterone if you do the uh, research and study on steroids uh hitler and also so i also found out it was uh hitler and a black guy that invented it the black guy really invented it but hitler honed it in with his scientists, his doctors, uh, it was meant as something to make a superhuman. Talking about and, the invention uh, of testosterone? It just, which it does, you know, but it just wasn't the type of... Can anyone in the chat right now, I'm not positive, I don't know this information, can you fact check this? 
Where was to like who invented testosterone, or where was it first developed? Because Kelly's stating it's it was made by Hitler and his black friend. I'm not sure. I can't. I can't fact check that. I'm. I'm not really sure. Soldier, he wanted. Um, so it became a thing in like Russia, Germany, and the U.S. where Olympic athletes would use it. Athletes, people that want to be stronger. But we got to remember, steroids also help AIDS patients, cancer patients, um, kids that can't grow. That's German what it's made. used for medically okay. now. Men, older men that uh, need a hormone therapy replacement, stuff like. That's what it's used for now. I remember my baby mother, she had started bleeding uh, before she gave birth to the babies. And they had to give her a booster shot of steroids to save the babies, whatever. And uh, it has its medical use, man. And that's what it's for. It's not to be abused, which, uh, you know, most bodybuilders, fitness people do. And it's no... Okay, so based on what you guys are saying in the chat, it looks like it was developed. Uh, Roids first tested on Captain in Germany. So uh, a lot of Germany. So it looks like, yeah, it was, it was Germany. It's no benefit. I mean, we all want to look good, Jack. You know, I, I know a lot of people go say it's easy for me to say that. And I'm just telling you my experience. Nobody else have gave an in-depth overview like i'm doing with you guys now and it just uh yeah, yeah they do okay so kelly is wrong on that there is people who do in-depth overviews of what they take i'm one of them even though i'm not the biggest bodybuilder by any means even compared to a natural let's be honest uh dr tony huge incredibly open about what he takes russo more plates more dates open about what he's taken greg Doucette, i believe is pretty open about what he's taken in the past um, Cali muscle only stands out because he lied about it for so long, claiming natural for probably 10 plus years. Same with Michael Hearn. I mean, if we could get Michael Hearn to make a video like this steroids, the raw top or the raw truth, that would be ideal. Uh, you know, I understand a lot of people that say they natty, not what not. I never said I was natty. Everybody assumed I said it. It'd be, they what? start making videos. He said it and nowhere in the world. I said I was natty. If I did, uh, it was trolling with the trolls, but I never said. Wait, no, dude. Are you kidding me? All right, this dude, that's the easiest way. All right, that's a cop out. A hundred percent. He never, he said he never claimed it unless he was trolling the trolls. Bro, we know damn well he was claiming natural because it promoted sales of everything he was promoting and he wanted people to think he had the craziest physique and genetics of all time. Let's be real. Like, don't try and pull a quick one on us. There's no chance. I believe even in one of my expo videos, when I interviewed Cali, he, I asked him if he was natural or not, and I'm pretty sure he told me unnatural. I'll have to go back and check that clip, but I'm pretty positive. And I know for damn certain he claimed natural numerous points throughout his career that's you why know, it became a topic if he would have never addressed it no one would have ever like everyone would, would have just assumed it wouldn't have became as such of a viral topic as it did back in the day like with people saying he's a liar he's not natural calling him out about it because it, it, the reason they did that is because he was claiming i understand natural. a lot of people that say they natty not what not i never said i was natty everybody <laughs> assumed i said it It'd be, they start making videos. He said it and nowhere in the world. I said I was natty. If I did, uh, yes, it was did. trolling with the trolls, but I never said, he said, so he I'm said a to natural troll the bodybuilder. Trolls. I'm natty. Like, I never said that in my life. Why? How could I? So if there are people out there that's lying about it, I get it. They want endorsements. They don't want to. No man have to tell nobody what they're taking. That's like a man having to say how he masturbates. Do I got to tell you how I do that? Like, I mean, maybe if it's like questionable, I think no one should lie. Th that's the thing. If you get asked, you can, here's where the fake natties always get twisted and they, they run into problems is they feel they need to give a response. If you're not natural and you don't want to talk about it, let's say for those influencers that may potentially be watching this is just say, you don't want to talk about it. People then are probably going to assume like, Oh, okay. This dude's not natural. Like, okay, we get it. He just doesn't want to talk about his cycles. It's, there's numerous bodybuilders out there who are like that, 
who we know aren't natural. They just don't want to talk about their cycles because they don't want to promote it and they don't want people to replicate or try doing what they're doing to potentially harm themselves, which is respectable. But when you go out and admittedly say that you're natural to try and trick and fool people into believing it in order to promote sales, then it's sellout. Okay. And that's what majority of the fake natties do. No man had to tell you anything. It stuff should be obvious. You know what I mean? To a, a to a sane uh, person with comprehension. But for stuff some people, it's not obvious. You know what I mean? If you look at a tree, ain't that a tree? I mean, for, for leaves, the people new in the industry, tree, like, they don't, they don't know what's achievable sense. naturally or people not. People want people to, oh, come tell them all their business. And no, it ain't. You don't have to expose. People don't. It's not a necessity for them to tell you what they do. Like, that's just not realistic life, man. But my Honestly, I, I, in my opinion, I feel if you're an influencer with a large following, you inherently have the obligation to convey to your followers and the people that look up to you as a role model, as a celebrity, to give them the truth of what's actually going on. If you respected your fans and wanted them to respect you back, you would just tell them the truth. Be open about everything you're taking from the get-go. Oh yeah, I forgot about fucking Simeon Panda. I literally just did a video on him yesterday. If we could get Simeon Panda as well to make a steroids, the raw truth video, him, Mike O'Hearn, and uh, so Callie's already out of the way. Who's another like long-term fake natty that we'd potentially want to see that them come out about their cycles? That's my experience with it. Um... As we see, it's a lot of deaths uh, with fitness people, body burn, but also we got to remember uh, United States, the number one cause of death is heart attacks. That people not on roids. You know, we just know it's congested the few heart celebrity uh, bodybuilders, IBB pros. We know them because we yeah, in that is, field. We one. in that culture. But uh, it's not, overall, it's not many bodybuilder fitness people to die. We just lately encountered a quite a few which i was in that boat had a heart attack massive heart attack i could have been dead um fortunately i went to the hospital within a great mile you know in a good time to save my life but um like i say if you're under 35 don't do it man it's unnecessary you don't even need I to do like that advice i would I, that's a little extreme i wouldn't say 35 I would say wait till you're definitely at least 25. Uh, people try and jump the gun way too quick. I get like 17, 18 year olds in my DMs asking about cycles. Guarantee you probably change your mind after even just a couple months, let alone years. Like let, let it sit and ponder till you're 25. Then make the decision. Unless you're some incredibly gifted genetic freak and you know your calling is to be on the Olympia stage doing pro bodybuilding shows forever then possibly but other than that like what's the point only so but i should also say 35 Callie telling everyone to wait till 35 now i'm gonna be honest i really doubt anyone's gonna wait till they're 35 that's when you're in like the decline of your life so why would you try and do a cycle and look your absolute best when you're already going to be in a declining state i would say you probably want to peak around like your 30s like have your absolute best physique that way like through your 30s you're looking pretty solid me you should be taking as a pre-workout to pump you up um if your test low young get on like a um test booster like i have hyphy tests or whatever ah oh, see dude there's the promo again and this is the shit that irks me the guys that are just trying to like they do these videos to promote their products it's so crazy like if you have low test and you're a kid i get do not buy Cali Muscles Testosterone Booster, please. You are wasting your hard earned money. You probably don't have much to pay for anyway. If you're, if you're in college, if you're in high school, don't steal your mom's credit card to buy Cali Muscles Test Booster, okay? That's not gonna do little to anything to actually improve your test levels. If you're clinically low, if you go get your blood work, uh, which by the way, you can go to Let's Get Checked once again to actually check where your levels are at, and you're actually low, get prescribed testosterone because they're not gonna give you a super physiological cycle, they're going to get you in an optimal normal range to where you can every day function, have a normal libido, normal sleep cycles, normal energy, uh, normal appetite, normal everything. Okay. Do not go with the testosterone booster. 
Um, but try to stay just, you know, clean as possible, man. We already encounter a lot of chemicals in our food that we have to ward off and be worried about. So adding a lot of extra stuff is unnecessary you know and i know a lot of you young guys out there oh you already body built you did it and we going to i'm just telling you my experience if you do it you do it i gave y'all my stack <laughs> like you know but Pretty extreme stack you by can the expect way. some bad stuff to happen health wise you know what i mean uh i had a lot of puffiness of the feet ankles um i had a lot of little stuff like that that was giving me a sign to not mess with it but i kept going so that's the thing with messing with uh chemicals you don't know where they made how they made nothing like that so it's just crucial man and uh you know like i say don't do it if you don't have to that that's the bottom line of it man i hope y'all i would agree with that it, unless your goal is like once again to absolutely compete like that's your career, which I don't recommend, by the way, because for some reason, people think it's this crazy amount of money and it's the best lifestyle. All you're going to be doing is you're going to be secluded. You're going to be on a regimented diet, eating the same thing every single day. You're not going to have a life. You're going to be super introverted. All of your money and everything is going to be going into your competing and your cycles. So what's the point? Unless you're the absolute number one in the world, maybe like Big Rami, Phil Heath, these dudes making large checks. Even the people stepping on the Olympia stage, the bikini competitors, the men's physique competitors, have you seen how much they get paid to be the best in the world? Is it really worth like a 20 to 25 grand paycheck? <laughs> I, I can tell you guys better incentives and better money moves, okay? If you're trying to do it out of business, trust me. Um, I think that wraps up Callie's video though, guys. Um, once again, if you guys do want to potentially check like your testosterone levels, and see where you're at. Just to see if you're in a healthy range. Get the best sleep you possibly can. Let's get checked. Has a deal for you guys in the description down below. With discount Kenny Kale, we'll save you 30%. You can check your testosterone, your estrogen, your vitamin levels, your iron, omega, kidney, cholesterol, cortisol, thyroid, uh, basically everything. And then you can also even do like a sexual health test if you're maybe like a little bit scared to get in the, the clappity clap clap. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, respect to Kelly Muscle though for making the video. Definitely, if you guys want to watch this video, even though we would just watch the full thing, steroids, the raw truth. Maybe we can get Mike O'Hearn, the fake natty, maybe Simeon Panda, someone to make these videos next. Maybe you guys should request it from them, and I would definitely review it. I'll, I'll try and get them on video as soon as I possibly can. But I hope you guys just remember to be careful, and I'll catch you on the next one.